Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. Welcome, Bear Bets. Presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DK Sportsbook app and use the code BearBets. That's the code BearBets for new customers. Get two hundred dollars in bonus bets. I am your host, the Bear, Chris Felica, joined again by my illustrious NFL veteran colleague Jeff Schwartz. Sammy P will join us in the NFL Gambling Group chat this week, uh, as well as Will Hill, which we'll get to shortly. So. Jeffrey, yeah. if you've been betting dogs and if you've been betting unders, uh, this has been one hell of a start to the NFL season. It, it has. I'll tell you what, man, before we get to that quickly, Bear, um, the grind of wagering sides in NFL Sunday for a contest is exhausting, Bear. Like by the time <laughs> the day is over, compared to like college football, where it feels like a lot of the sides you take are sort of win or lose fairly like easily. Mm-hmm. Like you might just lose it outright pretty quick. Like I knew UCLA wasn't covering or the LSU wasn't covering fairly quickly. Yep. I knew Indiana was covering right away. Yep. I knew rice was right. Yeah. Rice was yeah. DOA against yeah. army right, right off the bat. And in, in NFL though, these games are so close. They come down to just one or two plays. It's a complete sweat for three hours, three hours, 15 minutes. And I, I went three and two in my contest this week. I didn't win my 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 best bet for the third straight week on this podcast. But I, I went three and two in the contest. And afterwards, you're like exhausted from from the, the, the anxiety of, of waiting to see if your wager hits in the NFL, Bear. It, 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 the funny thing is I've actually done much better with my NFL wagers this year than I have my college wagers. Interesting. Like the, yes, opposite, the, the, yeah. the way, and, and I guess it's because the way I bet, I, I have a tendency to to bet more under. I did have the over as a best bet with the uh, the Bills Jags on Monday night, which won, but I also yeah. had the the under in that Vikings uh, Texans games what got there. I bet uh, a ton of dogs uh, in the, 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 the way I approach my handicap. It just has a tendency to, be more of a it just it, it just happened this year in the NFL and hasn't happened in the college right so maybe uh, as the year goes on things will things will change up and and we'll get to more of a uh, kind of a contrarian or an underdog or a underdogs winning outright kind of role in college but right now NFL has been uh, been been a uh, a, a life scent for a lifesaver for uh for for the, for the handicapping season so far I like it. Uh, you mentioned the unders bear quickly. Um, I think offense will, will catch up to what's happening in the NFL right now. Right. Um, a lot of times defense does start ahead, and the more reps offenses get, they get better at it, right? We're talking about two eye safeties. Mel Kuyper talked about eliminating two eye safeties, which is, come on. Which, is very, which is very funny. Um, I love you, Mel, but come on. Yeah, just, just don't, don't, don't sound so dumb. You got to run the ball first of all. That's how you do it. And offensive line development right now is not great. Not a lot of depth, and there's a bunch of offensive lines and around the NFL that are just decimated right now with injuries. The Saints, the Browns come to mind. Um, they're, they're just it's just you can't do much if you're, if everyone's hurt. Okay, um, and then there's a lot of young quarterbacks playing, and it takes time to learn. We we saw. From week two to week three, Bo Nix got better. Jay Daniels got better. Who's now the favorite for, for rookie of the year? And and Caleb Williams had a loss got better. So I think we'll see Bear, the NFL season sort of cycles through different things. Early on, it's defense and unders. I think at some point, we'll get back to, to points. We, we will mention, in, you know, in, in the game, there's teams that we expected to be better on offense. The Lions, the Chiefs, obviously, that aren't scoring as many points as they have in the past. I think it all will, will figure itself out eventually, Bear. But the unders are going to hit for a few more weeks until the offenses sort of catch up to what the defenses are doing. 
Yeah, I, I, I think it does go back to a little bit of preseason and these starting quarterbacks not playing and, and just everything coming along slowly. But something that's not going to come along slowly is the gambling group chat. We are fired up. We are wound up. We are ready to go. Um, myself, Jeff, Sammy P, and Will Hill, enjoy. Gambling group chat, back NFL version. I'd like to welcome Sammy P back to the gambling group chat this week. Uh, for uh, the the NFL style, usually uh, John Murray from the Superbook has been here with us on Thursdays, and that will continue for the rest of the year. But we're fortunate enough and honored to have Sammy back with us to talk NFL. And uh, we're, we're looking Thursday night here, Giants, Cowboys. This number is kind of all over the place. It's a six at DraftKings. It's some fives. It's some five and a halves. Uh, that Dallas defense Sunday against against Baltimore. They uh they had difficulty stopping the run. I don't exactly think the Giants uh, pose a threat here to to run the ball and impose the will uh, with the, the offensive line the way the Ravens did. Nor do they have a uh, as dynamic of a quarterback as Lamar Jackson. Feels like again the, the Cowboys are always seemingly a public side, but uh, I don't know if I want to lay six, but I might shop around and find one of those five or five and a half, Sammy. Great to be back on the NFL pod. I didn't realize it was a one-off. I was so excited I brought my South Park shirt. Hey, Kenny, that's a dance. That's a man, 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 man. Uh, very awful, Cartman, but I can tell you this. Well, we don't know if it's a one. It'll depend on the schedule the rest of the I, I shouldn't have introduced it as a one-off because you are obviously you've you've got you, you're bigger and better now. You've got you've got more responsibilities and you're on uh from, from nine to twelve every day now. So we just our our, our taping schedule did not jive with your legitimate work schedule so. by the way there was a two-point line move going from john murray to sammy we won't say which way it moved though <laughs> <laughs> that's fair where's my cheesy poops um cd lamb uh receiving yards i imagine he goes off in this game but i think as we have this conversation on a wednesday afternoon we have to understand that as i call them and will always loves this the marge simpsons of the world are probably going to bet the over day of the game correct so Probably. by the time we get to kickoff, what is the number on CeeDee Lamb receiving yards? The floor right now is 79 and a half. There's an 80 and a half. There's an 81 and a half. There's a very good chance we get to kickoff by the time you finally figure out, oh, there's Amazon Prime on your 88, TV. 88 and a half. I was going to say at least 84, 85 and a half. So understand that if you're going to be betting star players, namely star receivers in this league, you have to bet these guys. If it's a Thursday game, you bet them on Tuesday night or Wednesday morning if they're available. Now, some yeah, it just takes a couple. Of, it just takes a couple of bombs to Lamb. To uh, it doesn't. To what it doesn't him. take of much of an effort. It doesn't take much of an effort. I mean, so many people bet Justin Jefferson overs on Sunday, thirty minutes before kick, and then they'll tell you, "Oh, I I got hosed." Well, actually, you went over oh. eighty nine and a half, and it was eighty four and a half on Saturday and it landed 87. So I like the lamb look. He could clear all the numbers. Giant secondary is atrocious guys. And Dallas needs a big one here. Dallas needs to put one on the giants. I don't, I don't want to bet the side lean to the Cowboys. Don't love it. But will, I think lamb is going to go for a bill. I think he's got a hundred yards in him on Thursday. A lot, a lot of times before you get, get in, well, a, a lot of times check the, uh, check your DK app because uh, I, I've been noticing this year. They do, Put the uh, the any uh, the the touchdown anytime touchdown promo in there where you get a yes. nice little boost. So uh, you could probably get uh, CD Lamb with some uh, with your fifty percent boost on a, an anytime touchdown score for that Thursday game. You could probably get CD Lamb at plus money to score a touchdown with that boost. So uh, make sure you check your DK app and uh, and punch that. And I'm quite sure I will before I head down to beautiful downtown Orlando for big noon on uh, on Saturday. Yeah, that was uh no, you're right. They, they a lot of good promos, odd subject to change, of course. Uh so keep that in mind with uh with all of these promos. I look, this is not a league where you want to lay points on the road. I, I'm gonna lay points on the road. I just think uh Dallas, they for all of their flaws, they're still better than the Giants, and they have a habit of 
you know, beating up on these teams that they're yep. supposed to be one and two. They need the game, like Sammy said. And Giants had some success last week, but that was blitzing a Cleveland offensive line that was decimated. Cleveland couldn't run the ball. And if you look at Dak, I mean, his splits versus the blitz versus, uh, you know, non blitz, he really does well when you pressure him, when, when you put the blitz on him. I just think Dallas, maybe a team total is a better way to play if you don't want to lay the points here. But I think Dallas gets into the 30s here. I don't think the Giants keep up. I think Dallas needs it, and I think Dallas gets it. So I'm okay laying the six. I mean, it was, if we were recording it this time yesterday, it was like four, four and a half. Though That was clearly too short. Five, five and a half. Those are sort of some dead numbers. Of course, you want every half point you can get, whether it's a key number or not. But I do think Dallas wins this game by, you know, touchdown plus. And look, Dallas has killed the Giants. It, they went, went there last year, opening night. Remember that opening Sunday? I won like 41 nothing, 42 nothing. So to me, it's, look, it's not going to be 42 nothing. But Dallas winning the game by, you know, seven points, double digits, I think is certainly within the realm of possibility. So I like Dallas here. This would be the game, right, that, that Dallas gets right? Even though, guys, I thought last week was. I, I, I'm kind of surprised. Like, they got bullied by the Saints, and I thought, you know, they're pros. They're prideful. They're going to come out a little bit early in, in the Ravens game and show some pride, and they didn't. Got run over again. But the Giants can't do that, right? The Giants can't run them over. Uh, I like Sammy's prop, too. Uh, I also like uh, like uh, Dowdell to get uh, over 38 and a half rushing yards. Uh, I think Dallas tries to run the ball well in this game, sort of command the line of scrimmage again. Uh, but I'm with Will on this one. I think it's Dallas or, or pass in this game. I think Dallas uh, will get right here. They're better than the Giants, and they, they beat bad teams. They've done this for years now. They've dominated bad teams. The second they play a good team, they lose those games. So we we had a, a, a blowout New York win against a dog opponent on last Thursday, and we'll see if we get another uh, blowout win in a team involving or blowout game, I should say, in another game involving a New York team on that field uh, on, on a Thursday night. Will, what's up with your Vikings, bud? Oh, man. <laughs> They're not going to rope me into getting hope, are they? I'm I'm actually starting to uh starting to believe a little bit now. At some point, Sam Darnold is going to look like Sam Darnold, but uh, look, you've, you've heard it everywhere. This coaching staff is as good as anywhere in the league, really, with Flores, what he's done with this defense. Two years ago, they're the worst defense in the league. Last year, right around average. Now they're just, it's not just like they're they are winning. They're killing people in a league where every game is close. I mean, the San Francisco game, I think, was a six-point deficit, a six-point final, but I mean, they were going up 27-7 where before they fumbled going into the end zone. Uh, even that Giant win week one, people are like, oh, Giants are terrible. Maybe they are, but the Giants have played pretty well since. Mentioned they beat Cleveland. They could have, should have beat Washington. Then Washington goes on to beat uh, Cincinnati. So all of the little, you know, transitive properties, these little clues of how good a team is suggest the Vikings are really good. I'm still not at the point where like this team's going to be playing in an NFC championship game late in January, but uh, boy, adjusted win total 10 and a half. That again, that seems just, crazy. It's, it, it seems crazy to me. It really does. That being said, Jordan Love, 70, 80% probably going to play. I don't know that I want my 70, 80% quarterback going against Flores who, you know, can, can smell blood and sniff any weakness. I would take the points with the Vikings. We're sitting at two and a half. I don't like three actually now with three, three, now. Three, three and There and you go. I would take the yeah. three. I, that's basically saying these teams are not even equal Green Bay because what home, home field worth a point and a half so Green Bay is a point point and a half better I'm not sure about that uh, I'll go back to the well and take Minnesota plus the three here I don't know that it's always a great habit to like just bet on the team that's the hot team that looked the best the previous week usually that's a way of uh you know losing money Sammy but Minnesota looks for real here I love this game can I ask you a quick question Will what's the final score rapid fire first score that comes into your head Minnesota Green Bay uh, 20, 24, 20, or 20. Yeah, I was 24, 20. Yeah. Wow. So you're right on the number. Okay. I was, I was thinking that totals a little bit high. Um, look ahead was 38 and a half. And of course that was with Malik Willis in, it is now up to 43 and a half, 44, yeah. um, mostly 43 and a half. They're juice in the over naturally minus 110, minus 112, minus 115 to the over, which is going to happen when you get close to a number like 44, Minnesota is 3-0 and to the under, and I'm not the biggest trends guy in the world. Brian Flores, assistant coach of the year. That team looks unbelievable on defense. And you look in back-to-back -back weeks, they have completely shut down San Francisco and Houston. Remember, C.J. Stroud, guys, coming in the last game was a Hall of Famer. And the Houston <laughs> Texans were going to the Super Bowl, and they couldn't do anything. So my concern, I know that numbers and opinions aren't exactly always the same, and I like to bet more numbers than opinions. 
But Jeff, when you have a quarterback off a knee injury who has to come back, he's probably not going to be anywhere near, forget yeah. 100, 90%. Yeah. I like what LaFleur can do. LaFleur, how about LaFleur maybe for a coach of the year guy to get two wins out of Malik Willis, by the way. How many how many touchdowns is Green Bay going to get? I I don't know, guys. I think I think I'm black and blue, old school NFC rock fight, 20 to 17. 17 to 13. Like, I think this is a game predicated on stops on defense. And uh, maybe Sam Darnold comes down to earth a little bit. So I, NFC, I like the NFC under. central, an old NFC, NFC central game. Wasn't Tampa Bay in the NFC yes. central yep. in the Bay of pigs. <laughs> and, and, and uh, the old Falcons, colleague of mine, the Falcons by, by the, the way, Sammy, if you, if you're looking towards the over or, or, or towards the under rather, one of the prominent offshores I see has total of 44 uh, minus 15. There you go. Do we do we see 44 here stateside? Maybe. I hope so. I'm gonna wait. I'm not in really a rush because they have they have clearly. I mean, they moved it up in Vegas, but they've also the betters have bet it up. But as we know, guys, if this gets to 44 and a half, it's a buy order back down. So yeah. it's sort of a spot where I kind of want to wait for some 44. And then just come under. I'll tell you this much: if you're if you're constantly betting with the move on the backside of the move, like when this number was thirty eight and a half last week, and now it's forty three and a half, forty four, and you're constantly betting on the wrong side. If you're betting over forty four, I promise you, over a hundred games, five hundred games, a thousand games. Hell. If you're betting five points off the market, you're not going to be okay long term. Jeff, before you give your opinion on this yeah. game, I have two questions, two very important questions okay. for you. Number one, did you ever blow the Viking horn? No, I was a backup right guard, but okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And, 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 <laughs> and, and I want your favorite memory of Lambeau Field. Um, so I had a, a teammate. Uh, what did he, he asked me a question about, um, like, Something about the stadium, and I was like, "Buddy, the stadium's a hundred years old. Like, that's not." It was some some really silly question about like how old the stadium was. Something about the stadium. I what I like about Lambeau Field, um, we played there twice. We played a, a December game there uh, and lost, and we played a playoff game there and lost the uh, the the Joe, the Joe Webb. Webb game, the Joe Webb game, twenty seven to three. I think we lost the game. Um, is is just you feel the history in that place because the lower bowl is still intact. Like they built on top of the, the lower bowl, right? So you, that, the entire lower bowl is what it was when Lambeau was built. So it feels super cool to, to be in that place. And then also like how Packers fans just wear their hunting gear. It's just orange all over the field, like all in the crowd. Like they're not wearing Packers. Others wearing their orange hunting gear. Um, oh, otherwise, yeah. I mean, look, I didn't have great memories. We, we lost both those games bear. So um, I only played there twice. That was it. Yeah. Green and gold overalls, Bear, drinking nacho cheese out of a ladle in the parking lot. <laughs> Beautiful <Just>, place. Ah. <laughs> it, it, whoa. You want to meme that one, right? Gift that Go one. Go ahead. Right there, clip guys. it. I don't yeah, give a damn. Yeah. Clip you, it. You don't, you don't do that one. Uh, no, uh, very, very nice crowd. It was a very, it was not a, a terribly loud place, but uh, it was a fun place to play. I, I think the Vikings are pretty sustainable, guys. Like they do the things that last over a season. They are good up front in the offensive line, right? They, they protect Sam Darnold. They run the football well. They have elite wide receiving play. Uh, Addison, I think, is is back this week. I think I just saw a practice support, or he may be back this week. And defensively, they went on third down. The last two weeks, 49ers and Texans, 25% on third down against the Vikings defense. And look, there will be an adjustment at some point because after four or five weeks, there's enough film on what Brian Flores is trying to do for offenses to take advantage of this. But not, not this weekend. You have an immobile Jordan Love against the, the Vikings pass rush and, and blitz scheme. I don't like it for the Packers this weekend. I'd, I'd much rather take the points with, with the Vikings. I, I don't think Sam Donald's an MVP, but I think it's just certainly sustainable the way they're playing right now. So there's another 3-0 and team there uh, that we didn't necessarily think would be 3-0 and before the year, and they certainly haven't been overly dominant and impressive in the Seattle Seahawks, uh, getting an overtime win over New England. Uh, getting the win last week over over Miami, and, and, I, and I forget who they, they beat in week one. It was a team that wasn't... Denver. Denver, yeah. Bo Nix's first start. So, yeah. So, they're 3-0 they're and as well. They're now a four-point dog, a uh, total of 46 Monday in the, in the second uh, second of the two Monday night games. 
do we, we? I think we're all on the same page, kind of like in Minnesota, uh, plus the points against uh, against Green Bay. There, uh, I don't know here though. It feels like the Lions. I mean, it wasn't the best offensive performance they had last week. We don't know if they're going to have uh, Laporta back this week. Uh, they might not have Frank right, right now. This the center, which, which which I think is a big deal. I, I know McDonald uh, with the Ravens has done a, a good job in the past. Uh, against Jared, that defense uh, against Jared Goff it was it last year where they absolutely uh, annihilated him. It's not a big sample size at all, but if I were playing this game, I'd probably I'd probably look for one of the three and a halves here and, and lay it with uh, Detroit home Monday night. They'll get pretty pretty wound up in there, and I, I still think the Lions have a ton of offensive weapons that could give Seattle some problems. Yeah, it looks a little light. Um, that being said, it hasn't looked like you'd expect from Detroit. I had high no. expectations for Detroit going in, and why wouldn't you? They were a play away. They probably should have been in the Super Bowl. But 20 uh, they, points last week against Arizona. Yeah, we, and the we, week we before, they had a weird game points, against but. Tampa. And the week before that, they had the big lead against the Rams, where like, the Rams were, were up three with the ball, about to put the game away. So you haven't had that you know, 30-point explosion. It's just it's coming little fits and starts here. It just hasn't been a complete game. Maybe this is the game, a Monday night crowd, that crowd will be juiced up. You know, they don't take for granted playing on Monday night football, being at home. They've got a good team. So we'll see how Geno Smith responds on the road. To me, Sammy, this line is a touch short. Again, you're not making a lot of money laying these points, especially over a field goal in the NFL. But uh, if I had to take it or lay it, I would certainly lay it here. I totally agree with you on the offensive regression, maybe the right way for Detroit. Can we believe right now the Detroit Lions are 3-0 and to the under after all yeah. they did last season and all the points they scored and how well they ran the ball? And I think they had like 33 rushing touchdowns as a unit collectively. They haven't shown us really anything on offense, but it's been red zone issues. The game against Tampa, they're one of seven in the red zone. That's unlike Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator. So I imagine they figure the, uh, some of that stuff out. This is the lowest Lions total of the entire season, 46 and a half. I mean, it's come through the 47. I can't imagine, Bear, they're going to keep betting that down. Eventually, it's going to come back up because this opened 48 and a half. And we're down to now 46 and a half, a little bit lower offshore. It seems to be a little low. A couple things to pay attention to. Seattle has two defensive linemen hurt, and we will pay attention to the injury report as well. Leonard Williams and Byron Murphy both got hurt for Seattle last week. Yeah. Those are run stoppers, Jeff. Hello, and those Jamie are guys. And Jameer Gibbs overs. That that yeah. is that is two guys that stuff the run and two guys that blow up the pocket. Yeah. So if they are not on the field, Jeff, you could speak more to this about blocking lines that are shorthanded that don't have the depth and the guys that can rotate in and out. This could be a game where I, I think we a get points from Detroit. And we A, and we B, rather, how does the outfit work? A, B, C. B, we get a, an over, finally, for Detroit. 31-17, 34-20. They are due for a game like this. They're too talented on offense to be this bad for three weeks. Uh, the reason why the Lions have not been as good on offense is their offensive line hasn't played as well. It's it's that simple. They have some injuries up front. Frank Ragnow, I think, has, they said he has a, a torn pec, I believe. Uh, I think they're trying to figure out whether or not he's going to play this week, and I'll, I'll make sure that you look that up. As you mentioned, it, it's Wednesday as we record this. There's no injury reports yet for this week. There's just obviously, you know, reports and whatnot. But, uh, you know, he, he gets a, it's a, a partial t- pec injury. So he might not play. We'll see if he's out. That That's a big difference in this game. Seattle has offensive line injuries. Uh, it's just, to me, a stay away. I, I don't really have a great feel for this one. Uh, you guys are right. The Lions are due for for a big one. Seattle's played nobody, right? Like, they're sort of – would it surprise you if the Lions won this game by two touchdowns? I don't think it would. No, it, it, it would not. It would not me. And I know there are some people out there. Well, I would, got some uh, McDonald uh, Coach of the Year awards. Yeah. He's currently your your favorite now to win to win Coach of the Year. Actually, he's second choice behind uh, O'Connell. O'Connell. But, uh, yeah, McDonald five to one. O'Connell three plus three fifty. Those are your two uh, your two short shots right now. We'll talk maybe a little bit about that uh, later on. But before we do. We'll, we'll now talk to the uh, about the game involving the uh, the Super Six sponsored by DraftKings Sportsbook, the Eagles at the Bucks. Uh, Super Six question for this game going to be: What's the result going to be? Eagles to win by three points or more, or not? Um, Eagles real I, I, a team that 
should have been up so much bigger than yeah. what they were last week. And they just kept finding ways to just shoot themselves in the foot. And uh, you, you're you're up, what, a point late, and you're trotting out. Sirianni's trotting out his kicker for a 60-yard field goal, which ultimately gave Atlanta uh, – uh, New Orleans, the ball, like, gave them the the go ahead score before, the, and they and then the Eagles obviously a third and sixteen, like a sixty yard pass to Goddard, got totally uh, fortunate to win a game that they really uh, had in control most of the way. So, Eagles and Bucks uh, teams played in the playoffs a couple of years ago um, as well. Current number here, we're we're looking at DraftKings two and a half forty four, which is pretty much where it is all over the place. I don't know. The Eagles may have won that game, but I came away just still not feeling really good about their long-term uh, forecast. Well, yeah. What's the movie? It's before my time. It's definitely not before Bears' time. I think it was maybe was it Gus the kicking mule where the the, the horse could kick? I think that's what <laughs> Sirianni thought he had, where he could just kick from sixty and just. I know but, these guys make kicks all the time, but so my goodness. But um, he also, but he also turned down like. Ridiculous. Easier field goals early in the game to kick sixty yard field goal late in the game. Like the end of the first half was coaching malpractice. Yeah. Right? They have fourteen seconds left. They go for it. If you get the first down, all you're gonna do is kill the ball and kick a field goal yep. anyways. And then they went for it. Like guys, it comes. Sorry to cut you off, Will. No. Sirianni is not a good football coach. It's that simple, right? He was good when he had Shane second call in the offense, and I forget who was calling and Gannon calling the defense. Get him. Since then, it's been a disaster. It's it, a, yeah. it, the, the team looks. Like they are unprepared each week to play. Jalen Hurts has regressed. I thought Jalen Hurts was after the Super Bowl he was going to continue to go up. Hasn't been the case, and now they have offensive linemen here again. Injury reports not out yet. Lane, Lane Johnson left the game with, with a concussion, I believe. Makai Becton had a hand injury. So like the the Bucks, believe it or not, I think they're a better coach team. Like they, so to me, I'm taking Tampa at home plus the point. I'm not betting on the Eagles and the way that they play football. I hate it. I don't like it. It's not good. <laughs> And consider this too. Devontae Smith took a huge hit. Oh yeah, For, yeah, in that you're right. Game. Yeah, he did. So you could be talking about an Eagles team down two or there three offensive linemen, down Devontae Smith, down AJ Brown. We talk about them maybe winning to spite Nick Sirianni, but they win because they're more talented than you. But if you take four starters off the offense, bear. It's a different conversation. We just learned this about San Francisco last week. Yeah. San Francisco is a six and a half, seven, seven and a half point favorite at Los Angeles without Kittle and Debo and McCaffrey. And they had a starter down on the O-line and they lost to the Rams, who I have mm. power rated yeah, as did. one of the worst teams in the NFL. The Rams suck. The Rams are horrible, but it's a divisional game where weird things happen. That's the NFL. When you think something can't happen, guess what? It can. Oh, the Panthers are never going to win a game. <clears throat> Panthers beat the Raiders outright. The NFL is its constantly just this game of what's the unexpected. I yep. wrote this down. You had, you had four teams that were the biggest teaser legs of the week. Tampa Bay against Denver, loss. San Francisco against Los Angeles, loss. Cleveland against the Giants, loss. Cincinnati against Washington, loss. So to just think that because you've watched two weeks of NFL that you have all the answers, you are mistaken. That's a long way around the block of me saying, be careful with Philadelphia. Just because they've been averaging about 400 yards of game, a game, they could be down their best two receivers and two starting linemen. And that is a big deal going up against the Todd Bowles defense. Yeah, I couldn't tell. Is Jeff holding a Lego? Is that a boneless chicken wing? Jeff Jeff had something like brown in his yeah, hand. I couldn't I tell. It's, my son made me a Lego. It just happened to be in my hand. I needed I needed a okay. prop to get angry at Sirianni. It was my pen I was holding earlier. Got something else here. Uh, I was just frustrated with Sirianni. I had to hold something to get my anger. Now, <laughs> Sirianni really is like a blackjack player at 3 a.m., just you know, doubling down, splitting with no rhyme or reason. Got to get even. Chasing bad decisions, trying to get even with a crazier decision. Uh, but but you guys brought up good points. AJ Smith, Devon, uh, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, and then the offensive line, Lane Thomas, uh, Lane Johnson, and uh, Makai Becton here. Who's going to play? Then on Tampa side, Vita Vey and, uh, and Antoine Winfield, are, are they going to play? That's the, the problem here doing the show on a Wednesday. We don't have answers to those questions. It makes it hard to handicap. But if Philly's down all those guys, maybe a Philly team total here under is in play. 
You made me just think about that skit from Family Guy when Peter's at the blackjack table. Oh, yeah. And they go, 18, hit me. 19, hit me. 20, hit me. 21, hit me. <laughs> That's what it, it, feels, it feels like watching the Eagles play football. So so what what, what do we think is the is the, uh, the cheese leg of the of the week here? Jets? Jets minus seven and a half. Tease that down. Che- Probably che- the everyone's going to tease the Chiefs to two and a half. Well, how you about know, t- how about Tampa Indy? Yes, Tampa up Indy. I, I will bet against the Steelers for the third straight week, and I'll probably lose. I don't care. <laughs> I'm doing it again. Mike Tomlin, road favorite in, in Indianapolis. I, I just, if Herbert's healthy in that game, that game is not what it ends up being. Herbert was playing really well until he got hurt. He was, um, and I, I think the Chargers are. That game is much closer. Eagles. I mean, the Steelers scored a couple late touchdowns there to make it much different. Guys, the Chiefs and Chargers game. I've watched every Chiefs game since 2016, okay? I know how this one's going to go. The Chargers are, are without, we know, right? Right now, Joe Alt, the right tackle, and Derwin James is suspended, okay? Joey Bosa may or may not play. The left tackle may or may not play, and Herbert may or may not play. It doesn't matter if they play or not. This game is going to be 1917. The Chiefs are going to win the very last second. Either with a Harrison Bucker field goal, or they're going to get a, a fourth down stop, or they're going to be fourth and seven. They get a long conversion. It's going to be an ugly. The Chiefs are now. They run the, they team. Run the pass interference play and yes, get whatever. It the, flag. The, the Chiefs don't do that as, as much as, as Joe Flacco used to do. But nonetheless, like this is the this is what the Chiefs are right now, right? Like they, they're just a team that is disinterested in blowing anyone out. They don't blow anyone out. They play close games for just no reason because they're bored. And offensively, the offensive line is playing well. Mahomes is playing okay. And they're just sort of figuring things out. We'll get to Travis Kelsey in a second, what I have a wager for this weekend on that. But the the Travis Kelsey thing to me is as simple as he's an older football player. They don't need him every play. And they're trying to find offense without Travis Kelsey. It's that simple because guess what, guys? He's not playing next season, all right? Like, we know that. And so I feel like the Chiefs are trying to just generate offense without him because they always know they can go back to him at any point in the season. The important games for him are when they play the Ravens, the Bills, like, and then obviously in the postseason. It doesn't matter what he does now. Stop worrying about what he does now, but it does it, it sort of take down the potential for scoring in games like this. Jeff breaking some news there with Kelsey. Boy, can we aggregate that? Post, post that yeah, you, on social media. You know he's not playing next season. Like I think Dude, that, Adam Schefter like, here. We it got feels that. like that's pretty – what? We, we, do you know that? I, I feel – I mean, do, do you think he's playing next season, Bear? Oh, don't put this on us. This is uh, on yeah, you. I'm asking, I don't do you think he's playing – You're the one that just said he's going to go full-time on the Aries tour. Do you, oh, <laughs> do, do you think he's going to play next season? I'm no, asking you. No, 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 I do not. Yeah. So I think they're trying. I, I think they're smartly trying to find offense without him because they know that they can always go back. To, we saw that at the beginning of the second half, there was that whole thing on the sidelines where they were arguing. What happened in the first two plays of the second half? Kelsey, Kelsey. Like they can do it anytime they want. Remember, remember this conversation come like playoff time again when like we were all like trying to find reasons to not bet the bet the Chiefs to get back to the Super Bowl <laughs> and, and win it and bet. And Kelsey looks old, and they're not blowing people out, and they look disinterested, and they haven't looked good, and and then then they'll then they'll be sitting in sitting in New Orleans on the. Oh man, I can already envision it now. Chiefs go to Buffalo, AFC title game. Bills minus three. We're all making a case for Bills minus three. This is the year. This is the year. Jeff's got the Chiefs hat on. Jeff's taking Chiefs money line. (laughs) Chiefs win again. And we're all asking ourselves the same question we ask every single year. Why did we bet against Mahomes in the playoffs? Why? I I like Buffalo, though. Buffalo looked good on Monday. Speaking of the Bills, I like them. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk into the trap and and take Bill's money line and plus two and a half against the Ravens. Like, like the, the Ravens somehow nearly gave that game away in Dallas last week. I, I know it was the onside kick recovery, which rarely happens, gave the Cowboys an extra possession, but I, I'm still not sold on the, on their their passing game. And are, are they going to be able to run through Buffalo like they did through Dallas? I don't know, man. Like, Allen is clearly the MVP right now of the league. Uh, th- this team looks really – with Cook – uh, they act, clearly have an ability to, to run the ball. At, I don't want to say it will, but Cook has looked fantastic since Joe Brady has really uh, put his stamp on this offense. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking Buffalo plus a two and a half here. 
Got a little opposition. I like Baltimore here. I'm going to take Baltimore on the money line. Uh, I think we're minus 130, minus 135. It just feels like a a Harbaugh spot where he gets his team up for these regular season games. I think this is a night game, right? This is the yes. Sunday night game? Really good, mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that crowd's going to be juiced. You have Buffalo off a short week from on the road Monday night. This is a tough spot. Quick turnaround for Sunday night. They were um, home Monday just, night. They were home Monday night. No, oh, they were home on the night. Still, still short week, but uh, look, I, I like Baltimore here. Not going to be a big bet, but I do think this probably closes three. I, I'm not. It'd be interesting to see, Sammy, which way the money goes. But uh, I think this is a decent matchup for Baltimore. And again, these teams like Buffalo that look unbelievable, unbeatable one week, it usually doesn't carry over. And if you could, you want to poke holes in Buffalo, you could. You can say hey, they were down early, 14 to Arizona. They, you know. Did some things to get back in that game, but they played Miami without Tua for half the game. I understand they were dominating before he got hurt, but uh, I don't think this Buffalo team, the first few weeks, is the Buffalo team we're going to see. I mean, they're not going to be a 14-3, you know, 15-2 type of team. So I do think it's a good spot for Baltimore, who, look, still 1-2, and two, still need the game more than Buffalo does. Sure. There will be guys waiting with bazookas to bet Buffalo plus three. So that's just the reality. You know, this opens one and a half, Baltimore favored, out to two, out to two and a half. If it were to get to three, there would be immediate resistance on plus three. That's just, that's the way the NFL goes. You know, key numbers in college, seven, 14, 21. Three in college is not that big of a deal, guys. If anything, four has proven to be more important because college kickers generally are meh. But in the NFL, guys love their threes and they love their sevens. And and now they actually like their eights a lot. Because as we've learned, if you're down 14 and you score a touchdown, you go for two. Because the analytics say go for two to cut it to you know a six-point game, and then you can win it with the second touchdown. We saw that on Monday night last year when uh, Vrabel beat the Dolphins. They were down 14 late, scored the touchdown, got the two, and then won the game bit by kicking an extra point on the next touchdown. So I I think Will is is fair on a cheap money line price and bear, you could win a plus three. This could land 21, 20, 24, 23 Baltimore. I'll say this about Baltimore. They are playing at the fifth highest pace right now in the NFL. They are flying up and down the field. And have we seen their fourth quarter defense guys? It happened against Kansas city. It happened against the Raiders. It happened against the Cowboys. I texted you guys and said, if if Baltimore loses on the heels of Baylor losing, I might quit. (laughs) I I mean, they got to replace not only Jadavian Clowney and Patrick Queen, but Bear, how big of a loss does Mike McDonald look like in the second half of these games at coordinator? That's a big deal. So until further notice, I I think I'm going to stay far away from unders involving anything with Baltimore in it. Yeah, I, Good. I I think Buffalo's a wagon right now. It, it would make sense because it's the NFL for them to play terribly and Baltimore to play really well right now. But Buffalo's doing a lot of good things. They, they've turned their offense from a you know, Josh Allen-based offense to more of a balanced offense, able to run the football. And then when you need Josh Allen to make plays, he's still there. They're finding, obviously, offense without Stephon Diggs, which – you know, the better offenses tend to do, right? The Chiefs found offense without Tyreek Hill. Shakir's really coming to his own. Coleman's playing well. They found Kincaid. I think defensively, they probably can be had still if Baltimore's able to run the football. Um, but something about Baltimore that that I just, the, the fourth, if they are up in this game in the fourth quarter, to, to Sammy's point, the way we've seen Gardner Minshew come back and Dak Prescott come back, Josh Allen's going to come back on that. Like Josh Allen's going to make this a much closer game. So um, I would lean Buffalo here. I don't have anything on my card yet for this one. So, so you look looking at some of these futures to make missed playoffs, and the Niners are one and two, and everybody is hurt. They're a double digit favorite against the Patriots this week. You look and they're only minus two thirty to make the playoff. Like like that screams. Like a number, like where it'd say, okay, I dare you, dare, dare you to lay two, just only two thirty with, with the Niners in that division with the Rams who really aren't very good and the Seahawks who were three and zero, but we don't know about them. Like it just seems like a really short price for a team that w- was was around like five dollars or so, I think, to make the playoffs. Oh, higher than that. There was a seven. That was a minus 700 I remember seeing and thinking, man, I wish I had the balls to bet plus 450. But then you look around the division and you go, Rams are old and washed. Aaron Donald's gone. Seahawks have a rookie head coach and Arizona is Arizona. So I, I, 
I thought about it. I didn't bet it, of course, at plus 450. And, and certainly I'm not going to bet the no now at plus 215. Here's, here's the team I think we need to talk about. And I'm sure our bosses will love this. The Dallas Cowboys right now at DraftKings. The yes to make the playoffs is minus 115. The no is minus 105. Where are we on Dallas? Do, do we like Dallas as a unit? Ooh. I don't know, guys. It's so hard was, to find I, seven teams. I was just disappointed in in their effort against Baltimore, like especially after getting run over by the Saints. Dallas, to me, they're going to beat the bad teams. It's about being the good teams, and and I, yeah, they might be a playoff team. I I don't know, but I'm just down on them right now. I, I gotta see, I gotta see more from them. I thought I thought with the the veterans they have on that team, they would rise up against Baltimore, and they got punked again in the first half. I, I try to put money on a team that gets physically dominated at, at, at the line of scrimmage um, back-to-back weeks like that. I'm very interested in the no, Sammy. Me too. I'm, I'm, I'm playing well, the old WFAN, uh, Mike and the Mad Dog, give him a wing dog, like when, when so, Mike the Dog is when New York Martin used to go through like the schedules. I'd be very interested in the no there, my friend. Okay, so if you bet the no now, it might be good price because – there's a schedule, right? They go to Pittsburgh. Then it's Lions nine at Niners at Falcons. Oh, going to Eagles, Pittsburgh's Texas. got a, we, we, with, with that with that offensive line. Oh yeah, no, I no. I mean, look, it's not a gimme. It's it's Sunday Night Football too. So Pittsburgh, Detroit, San Francisco, Atlanta, Philly, Houston. If you're going to bet the no, you better bet it now. Yes. And then you might be in a position in five weeks where you could bet the yes. Although if you think they're going to beat the Giants, maybe you you let that number, you let them beat the Giants, then you jump in. Maybe you could do it that way. That's good. Yes. That's, that's good fair. It, yeah. That's a fair point. But I yeah. think moving the landmines around and just closing your eyes and thinking, are the Dallas Cowboys a playoff team right now? To me, the answer is no. I understand. Will makes a great point. You want to buy and sell these teams at the right time. And they should win on Thursday night. But in totality, are they a playoff team? No. I don't. At this point, with the defensive effort that I've seen to give up 400 yards multiple times in a row at home, at home, Bear? Ooh. And, and Cleveland just might stink. Yeah. And the offense, besides Lamb, there's not much besides Lamb on, on that offense in terms of skill, guys. Now, there, right. there's definitely some concerns. My favorite, yes, no, in terms of the playoffs, you can still only lay minus 140 on Cincinnati to miss. They're 0-3. They went into the season. A lot of the, a lot of the reasons people like them was, hey, you heard it a million times. They got a last-place schedule. Well, part of that last-place last place schedule was teams like uh, Washington and teams like New England. <laughs> they already played two of those games. They got them at home, and they're 0-3. And now you still have to play all your division games. I I mean, to me, their win total is eight and a half. They're minus 140 to miss. To me, I just don't know if they're going to get back on track. And again, it's the timing of it. Do you wait for them to hopefully beat Carolina and maybe get a better price? I just, I don't know. Even with a depleted AFC where it looks like Miami's not going to be a factor. It looks like Jacksonville's not going to be a factor. It's going to be harder. Herbert's banged up. It's going to be harder maybe to get to seven teams than we thought. And that's always the case when you go into these seasons. Like, man, how, how are we going to get to seven teams in the AFC? There's like 10, 11, 12 good teams. Injuries happen, and these teams pair themselves off. That being said, I don't see how Cincinnati goes from 0-3 to 9-10 wins to make the playoffs. I think minus 140 is cheap enough to buy in here. And we were talking about that the other night about how like we may not think the Steelers are like a legitimately good team or like, but they're three and oh, yep. and you mentioned it. Will the Browns stink. The Bengals are zero and three. The Dolphins without two are probably a non-factor. The Jags who were probably thought to be a, a borderline playoff team are zero and three. You're probably just getting the chiefs out of the, out of the West. Like it, like the Steelers, I think we're still only around minus minus one fifty or so to, to make the playoffs. And, and whether whether you think they're good or not, that they continually win these toss up type games, and you you know they're just going to run the ball, and if they don't turn the ball over, they're going to get a great defensive effort. They're going to be in a lot of games. Like they're probably going to win nine games again, and that's probably going to be good enough to get them in. Yep, no doubt. A lot of disparities in these prices too. Like we were looking at some of our books, bear like minus one fifteen, minus one twenty. Then there's some minus minus one fifties. You don't see the disparities in other markets like you do in these make miss playoffs. And, and then you if you go to win. Montana, Bear, if you go to Montana, you can get the yes at like minus 140 and the no at minus 125. If you go to Montana and try and bet with the lottery, those Montana splits are both teams are favored. 
Both sides are favored. The splits are <laughs> unbelievable in Montana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, no trips out to uh, the Brawl of the Wild this year between Montana and Montana State for me. But, but speaking like we, another way to potentially play it is if you think the Steelers are going to make the playoffs, do you just then take a little bit of a longer price and bet Mike Tomlin around 10 to 1 to, to win NFL Coach of the Year? Because like I said, nobody thought they were going to be any good this year. He's never won the award. So it, it's like the... It's like right now you can see it, it's the best coaching job that Tomlin has done, taking a team that people thought would maybe be the worst team in the league or score the fewest points or not make the playoffs to uh, maybe a division title, maybe a playoff. Like So like, we, would you rather maybe just take a little bit longer price and risk not winning coach of the year or just or lay the, the shorter price at 145, 150, somewhere around there for uh, to make the yes in the playoffs? But, but I, I did grab some 10-1 to 1 Tomlin coach of the year. I don't think it's bad. Now, keep in mind with these awards markets, these voting markets. I mean, this time last year, it was Mike McDaniel. How was he going to lose this innovative offense? These things turn and they turn again. I mean, Stefanski was 80 to 1 with a few weeks left in the season uh, at one of the books. So the, the, there's a long season. Flacco. These, these what narratives. Was Flacco? To one? Flacco. I mean, Will Anderson was off the map. These these narratives change tune so quickly. These narratives, these, uh, you know, these, these markets, these narratives are so reactive. That being said, I mean, I can't argue betting 10 to 1. Absolutely not. Ooh, Jeff, look at that. Sirianni, 60 to 1, coach of the year. <laughs> oh, 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 hop right, hop right on that one. Um uh, look. That, that'll be that'll be my present for you, Jeff, on the first night of Hanukkah. How about that? I get a <laughs> I, Nick Sirianni coach of the year ticket. I, I appreciate it. I think it's the same day as Christmas, so I'll get a Christmas gift and a Hanukkah gift on the same day. I appreciate it. Um I mean, look, I, the thing about Tomlin coach of the year is if we think they're nine and eight, not probably ten not and enough, seven, they did it last year. He's not. He's not winning coach of the year, right? Yeah. So you look at what Kevin O'Connell is doing right now. That they, the Vikings will close your ears as a Vikings fan. It does feel pretty sustainable. Like th- th- they they have the pieces in place. They don't need Sam Darnold to be. He wasn't incredible against Houston. He just didn't make mistakes. Like that's all they need from them, right? Like you have good wide receivers, have a good offensive line, have a running back, you have a defense. Just don't lose it, lose it for us. Like he's got physical talent. We know that. We saw that coming out of USC. And just don't make mistakes. There's going to be games he's going to have. They're going to be terrible. We, like that's that's part of the NFL. But if he just does what he's doing now, protect the football, find the open guys as designed. We know this offense, the Shanahan offense, has done wonders for so many quarterbacks over the years. If the Vikings sustain this, Kevin O'Connell will be coach of the year. I'm not saying now's the best time to hop in because this price was better last week than we before that. But that feels very sustainable when you look at where these other coaches are. I mean, look, the Seahawks have played, as we mentioned earlier, three bum teams. Are they really going to finish 11 and six now? I guess 11, 12 and five to, to win this award? Probably not. But the Vikings are on track right now to win the division. I think of all these teams that we, that we talk about, even mm-hmm. with Pittsburgh 3 0, I don't think we see them as division winners. Um, so I would lean toward to, to, to Kevin O'Connor. You don't think O'Connor the Bears are going to come back and win that division, Jeff? Uh, no, I, I, I'm, uh, I do not think the Bears are win the division. They're going to have their coach fired. It might not be now, uh, but it might probably be the end of the season. You think they're going to run? You think they'll, you think they'll run Everflus out? Have you seen the Bears play football? Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Yeah, they won't I, they, do it mid-season. Though. No, they've no, never done no, it mid-season. They won't, no, they won't mid-season. They'll, they'll do the end of the season. But um, it was a mistake to keep them. But they should have cleaned house, started brand new, um, <laughs> and they didn't do it. And they're going to waste a year, Caleb Williams. Well, it's, that's it's what all, the Bears do, though, yeah. guys. The Bears are so dumb. They did this with Trubisky. They did this with Fields. They bring in a rookie quarterback with a defensive head coach, and then after the first year, they go, oh, we should get an offensive guy. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take this quarterback who just learned one offense, and we're going to teach him a whole new offense in the second year. And when that doesn't work, then they bail on the quarterback. It's happened to Trubisky, which was probably the right move. It happened to Fields. And now it's happening to Caleb Williams. How do you take a quarterback number one and keep Matt Eberflus and then know full well that he's not the guy and then go bring in another coach next year and teach Caleb Williams a new offense, two offenses in two years? It's like it's a bottomless pit. They constantly and, – and the, oh, the other conversation, yeah, good call drafting a punter in the fourth round. You have no offensive line, but the GM wears Nikes and he's cool and he took a punter in the fourth round. The Bears have no depth and they're so arrogant and cocky that they drafted a punter bear in the fourth round. Give me a break. 
It's an Iowa punter, though. And they're using them. <laughs> so, you, so you're taking the Rams plus three this week then, right? No, I laid two and a half with the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> I did. The Rams, the Rams are really bad, guys. They're really yeah. bad. Last week felt like a little bit of like just sort of they strike kind of lucky that week. They're at home. Conditions yeah, are great. good. It's it awesome. does feel like this week is the week when all the depth issues really show themselves. Yeah, I don't have anything on this game, but you guys were, were talking about the coaching uh, angle of this, and boy, it just it it makes me wonder. All of these teams underachieving that have quarterbacks, or at least a perception of a quarterback, the Bears, the Bengals, the Jags, the Cowboys. Belichick's going to be coaching one of these teams at some point, probably in the offseason. I don't know that he's going to try to jump in and save an uh, you know an zero and three, a one and four team. That seems like a weird fit where he's probably wanting offseason to you know implement his culture. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Is is Belichick coaching one of these underachieving quarterbacks? I can't see him going to a team like the Giants with no quarterback. Feels like yeah. Belichick is going to get one of these jobs though. Jeff Jeff doesn't I, seem I, like he I think so. that I think John Morrow is going to be call one through ten. He's going to call him every day until he takes that job. I I don't think he, I don't think if the Giants offer him that job, he turns down working for the Giants. I I know I know that Jones is it won't be there next year enough to draft a quarterback, but he has not developed a quarterback in a while. Are, are the teams that want their quarterbacks to be better going to hire Belichick? Now, Josh McDaniel will come with them, which will be a benefit because he's he's been a good coach with McDaniel as a coordinator. But I don't think he turns on the Giants and the Giants call him, and it, which they it, will call him. Yeah, that that'll be that would be the the perfect uh, comeback and injury career where it started as a coordinator with the. Uh, Dable's pretty good though, man. I don't. I, he hasn't yeah, won a I, lot, but D- Dable is pretty good. I don't. Yeah, I don't mind it. I see. I, I, don't, I don't mind him either. But you're going to you know, you give him a, another rebuild, essentially. You're going to let him stick through and draft a quarterback and start all over again. I, I don't. It's not his that's fault. The, Daniel, that, Daniel Jones that, stinks. It's not his but fault. But that's the thing, though. You're going to have Belichick take over a job where he doesn't. He's not going to have a quarterback. He's not going to have the first pick in the draft because Dable. They already have a win. Dable's going to get you to five, six wins with his coaching. So what? You're going to draft a, a quarterback tenth, twelfth overall? It's going to be another Mac Jones situation. You might be right. I have no idea. I have no intel. But I, I don't know. That that's that is one of the fascinating subplots because I think Belichick is sort of re. Uh, you know, not that somebody that's won eight Super Bowls needs to re up their stock, but I think doing all these shows, people realize how smart he is about football year off energizes him i think belichick's gonna be coaching one of these teams for sure i mean been very smart been very sarcastic so sorry we didn't get to to, to brown's uh, raiders for everybody out there uh that that'll be like the uh the bear bets plus 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 subscription uh twitter space that we'll have to do live uh sunday afternoon during during that game i'll get to in a few yeah. minutes bear don't worry it's coming oh wow a teaser i wow. like it thanks wow. jeff All right, guys. Thanks. Appreciate you. Have a good week. Nice to have Sammy back for the gambling group chat there for the NFL side. I thought he was going to give us an an FCS player for the NFL. I don't know what that is, (laughs) but, uh, you know, I thought he was going to throw it in there for us uh, in the National Football League. But uh, we we, we covered a lot there. Now it's time to cover my fade of the week presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, followed by Bears Best Bets. So, Bear, I'm going to fade the idea that Travis Kelsey is washed right now or he's iced out, or there's some sort of Taylor Swift drama happening behind the scenes with with Patrick and Travis Kelsey and and the wives and whatnot. I'm I'm going to fade all this. So here's why. Look, we mentioned it in in the game group chat. I think the Chiefs are sort of saving Travis Kelsey, figuring out ways to get other offense without him. But but we saw the beginning of the second half of that game, Travis Kelsey, boom, boom, right away. They're going to find a way to shut this down quickly and get Mm -hmm. him the ball early in this game in the offense game, and Derwin James is not playing. So they're without their safety who covers Travis Kelsey. So give me Travis Kelsey over 44 and a half receiving yards, Bear. I'm not sure it's a 100-yard game, but it's not going to be a 12-yard game. Um, I looked at his, his over receptions as well, which he'll post at some point, I would imagine, as we record this on a Wednesday on Thursday. I think it's a bigger game for Travis Kelsey because the Chiefs will try to sort of end this narrative that He's being iced out, or you know, even one one guy accused him of being out of shape and focusing too much on things out, outside of football. Bear, the Chiefs are very good about about making sure that certain guys get the ball. There's there's been times where they started with Xavier Worthy getting the ball a bunch of times. Ray, Ray Sheet Rice getting the ball a bunch of times. This is a Travis Kelsey game. He plays well against the Chargers. Bear, so I think Travis Kelsey has a good game this weekend. I go over 44 and a half receiving yards. And a 1917 Chiefs win. Yes. I, 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 I love the fact that we know what's coming here. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I mean, there's zero, zero chance. Yeah. I'm going to wait for this to see if this number gets to nine. 
and nine, nine and a half, maybe, hopefully. And, 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 and I'm terrified to bet the Chargers. the Chargers. I'm so terrified to bet the Chargers. I, I right now, as we as we as we talk, the injury reports starting to come out on Wednesday. Herbert, MRI, supposedly progressing. I don't know what that means. We know Joe Alt's not going to play. Slater has a peck. I mean, if they're down both their tackles and Justin Herbert, the Chiefs should win this game by ten. Of course, but, but they but probably it's the won't. NFL. We know what's going to no. happen. Yeah. It'll it'll be the the Malik Willis offense that the Packers installed a couple weeks ago when they yeah. you know when they when they blew out the Colts. Yep, exactly. But now the Chargers are not my best bet. Presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, uh, my best bet that honor goes to the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, I'm going to lay the three and a half against the Commanders. Uh, short week, West Coast travel, uh, consecutive road games for the uh, for the Commanders. I know Jaden Daniels was great. Uh, they haven't punted in a couple of weeks. But, but I think Arizona, off of a, a subpar offensive showing uh, against Detroit on Sunday, I think they come back with a uh, with a solid effort. They, they always yeah. seem to play very hard for Jonathan Gannon. I think they will. And we, I'm, I'm, we're, we're going to pump the brakes on the Commanders making the playoffs just right now. Agreed. Just just you slow slow the roll. Jaden Daniels has been great. He is the front runner for Rookie of the Year as he should be. But I, I think this is an Arizona team against a Washington defense that I still think has a ton of holes. And we saw we we saw them kind of give up some big plays to Jamar Chase and such. I think there's no reason why Marvin Harrison Jr. and Kyler Murray can't do the same. Uh, I like the three and a half there. So. Uh, I like this kind of fading the, the commanders off that win. I, I was look, I had the Lions this past weekend only because someone else. Uh, Marge had the Cardinals, so I, I, I didn't want to bet the Lions, but I did. Large um, Marge, and, 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 uh, and, and Marge ended up making me some money there. But so I watched one of the game. I thought I would. You're right. Both offenses didn't play well. I was surprised, Bear. I thought that was an over game for for certain, and it went under. Um, so I think Arizona plays better this weekend, and I think it's always good to sort of fade the young hotshot quarterback off his best game of his career in three games. So uh, I'm with you here on this one. Uh, my best bet, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, Raiders first half money line. <laughs> Hosting the Browns. I told you, Bear, I get to this game at some point in this show. So I'm doing a couple things here. One is I'm sort of looking at the Browns right now with an offensive line that's beat to shit. It's beat up and it's not good. Okay. Now, Crosby will probably play with a bum ankle, but I like the Raiders defensive line. It's not, it's not bad. And then we know Watson's terrible, so I don't trust him to play well on the road. He just is what he is at this point. Miles Garrett missed practice with like three injuries. So who knows if he plays in this game, how good he's going to be. But I'll tell you this. More importantly, Antonio Pierce called out his team. All right, Bear? And there were mm-hmm. certainly players on film that did not give the effort required. When your coach calls you out like that, you better play better the next week. You better have some pride in your place. I'm, I'm wagering on the pride of the Vegas Raiders locker room. <laughs> and it, I know I know you're laughing. I know it's bad. But I right am. now my best bet is 0 for 3 this year. So I'm doing something different. Try you something do. else, Bear, okay? Um I think that there's probably that locker room bear to play better this week against a Browns team. So I'm going first half because I don't know if it'll be that's all game. We we did see though last week, you know, Dan Campbell sort of called out his team saying it's my fault for all for all the problems. Mm-hmm. They played better right last weekend. Like there's a different approach for this. Um, so, uh, but the the video shows players were making business decisions. Bear. That's what I was going to ask. Like you, you hear that you hear Antonio Pierce say this, like you, you watch the the film, like, is it apparent? Uh, like what, he, yeah. what he's referring to? Yeah. There, there were a couple of players, uh, but look, it's not the superstars. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not the guys. And, and I think sometimes too, when those players get called out or removed and we haven't, no, we don't know who's, who's sitting or not yet. It does sort of fire the team back up. So I think early on we're going to see a prideful group of Raiders in this game. Plus the Browns are not good, Bear. No, they're really bad right now. So uh, Raiders first half. Try to do something different, man. Zero for three on this and year you, on on my best bet. Raiders first half. And you saw that after the embarrassing loss uh, to the Chargers with the, with the bonehead decisions by Pierce early in the and then that opener and then they went on the road yeah. second game and they played a hell of a lot better and they and, and they beat the Ravens. Oh. So good. Oh, which you, one the, usually the you usually think the psychology, game? like an emotion, has so much to do uh, in in the college game, but there is certainly a lot of professionalism that comes yes. into the whole psychology and, and, and desire and emotion to to play better than what you were your previous week. So, hopefully, you will be better than your previous week on your best bet. <laughs> Thank but you. Your, your your fades have been great. And yes, uh, yes, I'm, fa- I'm uh, fading Taylor Swift fans. It's not. I had to mute a tweet. So I think it got attacked by Taylor Swift bots the other day trying to explain the no. Travis Kelsey situation. 
And oh, I just oh, muted it. Like I just was. Oh, I, no. It had to be bots. I, I couldn't take it anymore. Just hit mute on it. I hope he. I hope he plays well so we get off this topic. Yeah, mute. Yeah, mute. Mute thread. Mute. Do you wish to oh. mute? Yes. Joe, oh. Joe, Joe, six, Joe, 67, 429, Niners fan, 18. Yeah. Yes, we do. Or block. Either one. E- exactly. So yeah. hopefully you're not muting us. Hopefully you're following us. And hope you continue to watch, rate, review, subscribe on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe to that Bear Pets YouTube channel as well. Another week in the books. We'll see if the dogs and the unders continue to uh, to cash tickets and just knock people completely out of their survivor pools. <laughs> so, which, which is great, by the way. I'm, I'm in a survivor pool that was 165 people at the start. Yeah. Down to nine, and I am alive. The, the Circa one was sort of what 14,600 yep. is now at, at 620 and 42, I think. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. crazy. Circa, I am I am out in Circa, but I am alive. I'm alive in the Splash reboot which is down to 80 something people from 1100 after I two like weeks. It. And I'm down in the, uh, my, my other, my other one that I'm in from 165 to nine. So consider to take up the, uh, the, the, the offer to, to have those three days at, at, uh, at Circa there for losing on the, on the tournament. I know, I know. I, I'm going to have to take Mike Palm and, and, and Derek Stevens up on that at some point uh, during the, during the off season, maybe take the misses out there for a couple of, a couple of shows. So yeah. Anyway, as I was saying, Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Rate, review, subscribe, wherever you get your podcasts. For Sammy, for Will, for Jeff, I'm Bear. Plus you bet, more you lose when you win.